Hello everybody, it's Lynn the Leather Bag Lady. How are you all today? It's, um, what day is it today? <laughs> it's Tuesday. Tuesday at 25 to 11. It's awfully late. Um, no reason for that other than, I don't know, no reason for that. So, uh, today's bag was listed this morning and uh, now I'm going to show you the picture of it in my hot little hands. Um, it's snowing outside, Leather Bag Lady Weather Report. It looks beautiful outside. I just, I don't know what I was doing and I noticed that the driveway was white. I'm like, what? And I looked out the window and it's snowing. So there we go. Thank God I don't have to go anywhere. I did actually go out today for a bit of a drive. I found a nice little bucket bag, Roots bucket bag on Marketplace, and I went for a drive to pick it up today. It was a porch pickup, so I didn't have to see anybody, speak to anybody. I e-transferred the money, and now I've got another lovely little uh, Roots bag to add to my collection, which uh, I got a lot of Roots bags to list, actually, but I'm going to keep going with the bags that I've already uh, scheduled for listing and these are still bags that I got when I was uh, doing those monthly trips to Sarnia so I almost sold 40 bags this month and you know what Rainy <laughs> it's pretty well thanks to you um, if you follow me you noticed I had a few tiny little videos today for a couple of customers who wanted some extra footage of bags so um that was kind of cool something a little different anyway today's bag is actually quite similar to a bag that I listed quite some time ago and my friend in st. Catharines Lynn purchased um, still haven't gotten Lynn's bags to her unfortunately Ziggy her husband passed away a while ago and it's just not been convenient for us to get together and um, but her bags are still here they're still waiting for her and uh, at some point soon we will get together so Lynn I haven't forgotten about you so anyway this is today's bag so Lynn you're gonna notice this very similar to the bag that you purchased and you're waiting to receive now I think Lynn's bag was two colors it was brown brown and black I think this one is just really dark dark chocolate brown patent leather and you know it's a bit of it's a mock croc design my favorite part of this bag is the zipper pull I mean we talk about this all the time something so simple can just elevate a bag now it's kind of a mock croc in this patent which is really kind of sharp and it's got uh, the gold tone hardware it's a pretty bag it's a Canadian made bag um, excellent crossbody bag will be a great shoulder bag as I nearly knock the glasses off my face um, nice gusset on the bottom and it is by Zenith I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this Zenith made in Canada so that is part of a zipper pocket here the interior it's kind of dark so I don't know maybe it wasn't such a great idea but um, it's that kind of uh, textured you know 50s 60s 70s 80s I've listed this I think as an 80s bag no uh, foam pockets or anything like that I put an extra hole um, in the strap so it does fit uh, beautifully really comfortably as a crossbody bag now it does have a couple of little nicks in it I don't think you're gonna be able to see it just because it is a little darker let me see if I can find where they are let me see if I can get the light to catch it you can kind of see it right there and right there so I was actually kind of um, okay with the little bit of damage that this bag has 
you really can't see it at all but I got to see what is underneath the top layer of patent and it it really is leather it's I've never seen uh, patent leather kind of deconstructed before so these couple of three little kind of gouges um, it was it was a little bit un educational for sure now I've dyed the gouges the same color as the bag you cannot see them at all and other than that there's nowhere on the bag at all the corners are perfect it almost looks like maybe it got caught in something because there's really nowhere on the rest of the bag to substantiate the little bit of damage here so you know whatever the reason is it's still a great bag i really 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 like it it's a great shape great size and away we go there we go anything that's got a little bit of damage on it is always priced accordingly so whew, having a hot flash so that is uh today's bag and again it was listed earlier today so let's Anyway, let's history piece today is kind of interesting. Again, a little bit all over the place because I think I've got my notes organized and then I read further down in my notes and it kind of goes back to the date that I think I've already covered. So we were kind of in like the 17th, 18th century yesterday. Um, yeah, so um, let's see where we are. Elizabethan uh, garments were offering a portion of the garment to hold those little pouches, those little gathered pouches that I told you about. King Henry VIII, Queen Elizabeth I, all those costume, those big dresses, and they all had little girdle uh, hooks or whatever. Um, Aristocrats were starting to carry um, scents in little gathered bags as well. As you can imagine, if you have ever watched a period piece, they just used to throw the um, chamber pot out the window onto the street. So whatever was in there, number one, number two, all just went out into the street. So when the aristocrats when the um, gentry used to find their way into the commoners part of the town or village or city or whatever, they would hold these little scented pouches to their nose to try and help the stench of um, urine and all the rest of it. So it, was, it wasn't a very nice time of the year. But where we're kind of coming into is um, the... Okay, so I talked about the sparring, and I talked about the ladies being girls being taught needlepoint. And then um, women's clothing started to become a little less uh, dramatic. And I think Queen Elizabeth I was kind of involved in that. I, I love British history. So I've watched quite a few documentaries, and she was quite instrumental in getting rid of some of the really constrictive um, corseting and that kind of thing. She kind of started with a more flowing, um, can you imagine if she saw what we wore today? <laughs> They'd lose their minds. So, retic I don't know if I'm going to get this right. Reticules? R-E-T-I-C-U-L-E-S were made of silk and velvet. So those are the little, you know, you see the ladies with their gloves and they've got the, actually, I'll show you. Where is it? I had it here, I had it here, I had it here. So this is a little leather kind of demonstration of what those little pouches were like. But they would have been velvet or um, silk. And you would see the, the girls with their gloves. And this is actually a little roots piece. Oh, you can see the roots. There we go. And it's um, it was made for TD Bank, actually. It's It has TD Securities written on here. But 
if it's roots i'll pick it up so this might find its way into somebody's uh, order as a little thank you for spending money with me but it's kind of cute the the td secure i think you can kind of see the td emblem the securities it took me forever to uh, figure out what that said but this is very representative of what those little reticules or whatever they're called would have looked like and there is another name too um how much time have we spent already yeah silk or velvet with wrist straps there you go and they crossed over to britain where they were known as undispensables who knew? Who knew? Men didn't really carry on with the pouches. Um, I guess as women became, as the, the bags became more of an adornment for women, I think the men felt that they were just a little too feminine for them. And that's when they, the fashion, they started cutting um, men's garments with sewn-in pockets. And they would put their stuff in pockets. So... This is just, again, a little story that I found online. And the modern purse clutch pouch or handbag came about in England during the Industrial Revolution. 1841, Doncaster industrialist ordered a set of traveling cases and trunks and ordered a travel bag for his wife's personal items because there was no way she was getting anything in that. So he noticed that his wife's bag was too small and he ordered a number of bags for her matching his luggage but in a personalized design so they were easy to spot and they would be distinguishable from the carpet bag if any of you've watched mary poppins and you've seen the carpet bag where she took everything but the kitchen sink out of it um it was you know that's what people were using now, London leather maker H.J. Cave produced the first known set of luxury handbags that are now on display at a museum in Amsterdam. So I'm reading this and I'm going to be very honest with you. I just presumed H.J. Cave was a man. He wasn't. It was a woman. She basically, the, the purse industry started with a woman. And she made wicker travel bags and leather trunks or trunk-like suitcases. If any of you have seen the leather suitcases that have kind of the corner pieces, I guess they already established that corner wear was a big thing. Because let's face it, the corners. I've got my sister's bag down here. Actually, this is um, a bag that she got a couple of years ago and I said it was looking pretty shitty so I said I would uh, help her and refurbish it for her but one where's the oh god I've done such a good job I can't find the corner where yes so this side of the bag there's you can see it's darkening right there so the corners are this is such a cool bag it's all leather. It's got a nice design. So this is all. I've been working on this for her. There you go, Jules. There's your, there's your bag. So that's kind of, uh, let's see what else it says about H.J. Cave. Um, yeah, they basically said back in the day that women would never have any use for... Um, purses bags but hey yeah that's about it hg cave is their company is still in existence and started making handbags again in 2010 isn't that amazing these companies are still in business i think this company was given the royal um you know how sometimes you see Tetley T, I think, has it. It's like the Royal Commission or something like that. So a lot of information. But again, I'm still trying to get my timeline organized. And every time I think I finish with an era, 
I find it again in a note further down. So hopefully that's not too confusing for you. But basically, purses have been around forever. And the quality of one's purse says a lot about the woman. And that is from the 1800s until today. We have prob women probably have more distinguishable fashion items than men do just because we tend to shop. Well, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that. My, my ex-husband was like jackets and I, yeah, his things was jackets and shoes, runners. Um, yeah, yeah, if, he just loved jackets. And for me, it was always shoes and bags, shoes and bags. And I think when you do carry a little bit of weight, the last thing you want to do is to go up a size. So with shoes, do you get to a point where you've gained so much weight that your feet have gotten bigger? Yes, you do. Handbags? Who cares? A handbag will fit you no matter what. So I think that's maybe why I love purses so much. <laughs> anyway, folks, it's late. So hopefully you've had a great day. Um, a lot of people are back to work tomorrow. I got shut down today. I knew it was coming. Um, my clients, the facility that they live in, um, they basically told me, one, that I needed a PCR test to go back to work because I did feel that I was sick and, and I wanted to be cautious. And I said, well, good luck getting a PCR test. And now it doesn't even matter because I'll be shut down indefinitely. And um, yeah, we'll have to see what uh, safety net is out there again for people like me who are not able to work because of COVID. So um, anyway, that's that. Have a great night, everybody. And I will have another amazing bag for you tomorrow. I'm going to, I'll post a Roots bag tomorrow. And another very confusing history piece on the birth of bags and luggage. Good night, everybody. Bye.